Creepazoids? Creepazoids. Okay, I gotta admit, I don't understand the title of this one. Gremlins I get. Critters I get. Trolls, goblins, Christ, I even understand the name Ghoulies. But Creepazoids? That just sounds like a schoolyard taunt spoken by a bully who just made it up off the top of his head. In fact, I think I was called that in high school. Give me a second. Yeah, is this Big Artie? Fuck you, stinky cheese head! Okay, let's consult the dictionary for this one. Creep, a boring, disturbingly eccentric, painfully introverted, or obnoxious person. Oh, so like the first few episodes of my show. Zoid, a part man, part animal, battle suit that takes the form of a robot. So you put both of those definitions together and you come up with Yakov Smirnov as Jet Jaguar. Yeah, that's not what this movie's about. This movie can't deliver the creeps or the zoids, but it merges them for its title. Let's find out what this movie is really about. We open on Marsha Warfield preparing the perfect concoction to replace the old bailiff on Night Court when something terrible starts to happen. Is someone out there? Well, apparently not something so terrible since it barely altered this person's tedious afternoon. Who's out there? This lady would be less concerned if it was just air coming from the ventilation unit. Christ, woman, show some emotion. It could be a land shark out there. Okay, maybe not a land shark, but rather the most dangerous looking vagina I've ever seen. And it hates glass. If that backstory wasn't enough for you, it cuts to text. Text that only takes up half the screen. Christ, Hop on Pop has more exposition than this backstory. What's this now? The superpowers have engaged in a devastating nuclear exchange. Earth is now a blackened husk of a planet. <laughs> Don't these people watch Nightline? We've been a husky people for a while. You know, I don't want to read the rest of this. Just continue. I said I don't want to read anymore. Move on! Damn it, I don't care! I don't want to read any more of this backstory! Fine, fine, since it's not going away, I'll read the fucking thing. Tiny clusters of survivors eke out a miserable existence in the ruins of the cities. Yes, a miserable existence, filming the movie Creepazoids. And no one uses the word eek anymore! The cast is led by Linnea Quigley, and it's going to be very weird for me reviewing a movie where she isn't standing opposite the great Crackers Finn. Jesus, so this is the nuclear holocaust? Nice. This makes 1990 The Bronx Warriors look like the Terminator. Let me guess, this is the dark future that leads to the events in Overdrawn at the Memory Bank? When cloudy stock footage of the stock footage from Castle of Fu Manchu hovers over, the gang of survivors seek refuge in an abandoned building located at the corner of George Miller Avenue and Escape 2000th Street. The first thing they do is scope out the area. Forty paces, no further. Now rendezvous back here in five minutes. Maybe we shouldn't. We don't know what's in there. Yeah, well, we're gonna fucking find out. Now let's hump it. Let's hump it? Is that a saying now? Yeah, whatever it is, we'll fuck it, but good. You don't think this setup's weird? I just think they left in a hurry. <laughs> I know, something must have scared him away. Like possibly the nuclear holocaust! So far, nothing out of the ordinary seems to be going on in this building. That is, until the music starts. Ooh, the music 
music is telling me that that's the most evil can of beans in existence. Once the crew gets settled in, Linnea's top priority is to fulfill her nudity contract. If this is poison, give me more. Thus began this character's crazy LSD habit. 90% of household accidents happen in the bath. I'm standing guard. No, you're not. I'm not? No. You're gonna come. No, I'm not. Yes, thanks a lot, movie. That's what I like in a post-apocalyptic film. Cleanliness! At least this means their leader can use more of his futuristic slang. Reveille, let's shag it! Let's shag it? Who says that? And besides, I think they already shagged it! Despite the fact that the post-apocalyptic boxcar children here find a fucking severed head, they still decide to set up shop in the building. Shit. Oh, thanks, Foley guy. Not sure that punch effect was necessary, no matter how fun it seemed. That was pretty fun. The Eddie Deason of the group finds an abandoned computer and tries to dig up some history. Well, you figure out what this place is? I know what type of place this is! It's a building! Wow, floppy disks! Don't get all futuristic on me at once, movie! I've yet to prepare myself for when you show me a light bright. This fucking guy here sure is going through a lot of trouble to play Math Castle. Maybe he can create Kelly LeBrock. That way the movie will end with the cast of the Road Warrior crashing their party. Bennett was snooping around the bookshelf. He must know something. He hasn't gone near the books in months. Had a weird thought. What if Bennett were drinking the stuff himself? Maybe he's sprinkling it in the food. Well, see, there's your problem. Never, ever drink anything poisonous given to you by someone named Bennett. So when Louis Skolnick over here hears something suspicious coming from under the computer tower, he decides to investigate. Oh shit, I know this part. This is where it gets really pretentious and he ends up in John Malkovich's head. Actually, it's a little gooier than that. <sighs> you creepy shits! After Killer Nerd gets sucked into Marge Shot's snatch, it builds up a great deal of intensity when one of the characters finds him in bed later. I'd like to think that there are monsters out there that kill you and then tuck you in afterwards. Oh shit, bedhead! And if you didn't see where this movie is going, don't worry, because I'm sure they also borrowed the breakfast table from Alien. I'd also like to work up an inventory of what we got here. Maybe they got movies and stuff. Yeah, and don't forget the classic movies, like Vice Academy. Yeah, this is gonna get disgusting. He's gonna give birth to John Hurt. After the creepazoid Hellspawn kills White Urkel, the rest of the Thunderdome posse investigates what could have caused him to rip off Ridley Scott. It was the food. It was the food that killed him. No way, we all ate the food. True but he was the only one who had the McRib. Their investigation leads them to the same underground tunnel with more feces, except this time I think the poo belongs to either Steve McQueen or Donald Plaisance. Our hero makes it a little farther, and it turns out that on the other end of the tunnel is... the planet from City on the Edge of Forever? Well, no one runs into anything, and instead, it's Linnea Quigley who was attacked, but not killed, because, you know, you can't kill the only name actor in the movie just yet. What was it? I don't know. It was a rat? No, no, that's a different ridiculous post-apocalyptic movie. The next option to find out the origins of this man-in-suit beast is to check the computer. Holy crap, it's MySpace's Alexa ratings. Enough with the computers. Can't we all agree that the monster is probably going to turn out to be Wilford Brimley? Actually, I don't think the characters here are smart enough to even figure that out. It wasn't a mutant test animal I saw. No way. You saw it too? Right, so. Show enough. 
When the computer turns up absolutely nothing, the remaining survivors begin to show signs of post-apocalyptic stress. I'd rather spend a couple of years in the stockade than get my head blown off. Not a wall, desertion, man, from the field of battle. They could line us up against a wall. And get our heads blown. Yes, I believe you were there when your co-star got his head blown. The gang splits up, the girls are left to gossip, while the guys are left to play Dawn of the Dead in the back of this J.C. Penny. At least this way we get to see a little more of the monster, or Creepazoid as the title calls it. Nice, it looks like Alien crossbred with Battle Cat. In space, no one can hear you have the power. This fucking monster is on screen so little of the time, they'd probably be better off throwing in some other beasts while they're at it. <laughs> Dear God, it is a fucking killer rat movie? It's the second post-apocalyptic killer rat movie. Why are there two of those? I believe her dying words were, rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. The guys don't fare any better either, as Butch here gets the biggest insult of all. I believe that's the first time I've ever seen a man in suit monster queef on someone. And to add insult to injury, it's acidy queef. There's nothing we could have done. What are you talking about? You did an awesome job watching him die. Linnea Quigley appears to get swallowed whole by the creepazoid, which means I no longer care what happens in this movie. <laughs> See what I did there? I gave the impression that I cared about this movie to begin with. And as if the monster didn't look goofy to begin with, in this final battle scene, we see even more of the thing. What the hell? Scratch what I previously said. Now it's completely moved on to looking like the Cloverfield monster meets Monsterd. But the thing is quite easy to defeat when Chief Tyrrell here finds a weapon we've never seen in the movie before and injects it into him. Great! How is stopping him from ODing gonna help anything? Actually, it does stop the monster, which is impressive when this happens only 60 minutes into the movie. As a whole, this movie is only 68 minutes long. How do they add on another 8 minutes? Well, I'll tell you, by having the creepazoid corpse give birth to the movie The Unborn. A child with such killer instincts, he is driven to kill right from birth, even severing his own umbilical cord. Now he just has to slap himself in the ass. Well, not that he stands a chance, since he is only 30 seconds old, so he's strangled with his dangling cord. Jesus, the director's cut of Freddy Got Fingered is dark. Wait a minute, we still gotta add another minute onto the movie. Let's check on the other characters. Yep, still dead. Plah, so that's Creepazoids. Congratulations on making it to 68 minutes, assholes. As if it would have been any less embarrassing if it were only 60 minutes. At least then you could have sold it as an unaired pilot to a television series. You could have called it, I don't know, Airwolf 2010, because that worked so well for Knight Rider. Or you could have tricked people into thinking it was the lost episode of Jericho. Regardless, if you gave it two more minutes... At least then it would have been as long as Black Devil Doll from Hell. Don't touch it. I want to check its proteins. 